Hi friends, it's your buddy Matt, the Global Ergonomist here for Tamiki Ergonomics Education. Today we're going to talk about the, the Revised Strain Index Worksheet. The Revised Strain Index is something we'll give you the overview for, we'll give you the applied operations, and we'll walk you through an input. It was originally designed in 1995 and then updated recently. We call it the RSI now for short. And it assesses the risk of upper extremity injuries, especially cumulative trauma and repetitive stress injuries. It allows us to rank each injury in terms of priority, and it allows us to review our intervention after we've done so, so we can compare it to our initial rank. Now, we have a nice layout to this. You'll notice there's three gray strips. That's step one, step two, and step three. Step one in the upper left-hand side, step two in the upper right-hand side, and step three in the lower left-hand side. If we go through this, you'll realize on the upper left is where we put all of our measurements. So we look at things like the intensity of work of the task. We look at the efforts per minute of that task, in other words, frequency. We look at the duration of each try of that task. We look at the posture in the hand and wrist. And finally, we look at the duration over a work day. Those are our raw measurements. Those will go into step one in the upper right hand area. And then we take those measurements and we drag them into the conversion tables in step two. So we work through these conversion tables to get conversion factors on the other end. You'll notice colored boxes in there. We put those conversion factors in those colored boxes and then we match up those colored boxes with the same colored boxes in step three down at the bottom, lower left-hand quadrant, we plug those conversion factors into that composite equation. This gives us a calculation, a score, which essentially gives us a risk score, whether or not a task is safe or whether it's a hazard. So it's a very good way of prioritizing our exposure, what we need to go after first. A high score means high priority and high risk. And then it gives us a way to go after these things in terms of intervention and what kind of tools we might use. For instance, we might look at tool design. We might look at workstation layout. We might look at employee work schedules and rest schedules. We might look at training, employee training to reduce exposure and ergonomic risk. By doing this, we can address reducing injuries, improving well-being, and enhancing productivity all at the same time. So that's how it's applied operationally. Let's walk through some inputs so you can see our three-step process, which is rank, respond, and review, or priority, process, or proof. Same three steps. That is, we have to get a rank first, we've got to respond to it, and then we've got to review our response to see if we've been useful here. The example we're going to use is a young man you see here working. He's working on a tabletop. He's assembling drawers for a cabinet, and he's got to do a bunch of these for a couple of hours before he assembles the cabinet himself. So first thing he's going to do is he's we're going to look at the left hand intensity of his task. You'll notice a lot of cranking with that left hand. So what we do is we go in the upper left and you'll see there's a Borg scale, which means an effort scale. And we're gonna give him a five, a four to five, which means a hard task, but he's showing no facial expression, even though he is cranking pretty tough. We're gonna take that five, we're gonna go to step two. We're gonna look for the corresponding conversion factor for intensity. Once we find that number five, we're gonna find the corresponding conversion factor. We're gonna plug that conversion factor into the left red box there, 6.70. Then we're going to drag that 6.70 into the red box for the left hand in the lower left corner of your worksheet. Now we loop back around and do the same thing for the right hand. We're gonna measure the intensity of exertion. We're gonna give them a four on this, stay in the hard zone, but this is a little bit different exertion if you'll notice the, what the right hand is doing. Find the four on the conversion table, find the conversion factor, plug it into the right hand box, the red box, take that number and plug it into the lower left hand corner for the right hand as well. Now you've got the intensity 
covered. Let's look at the left hand efforts per minute. In other words, the frequency. In this case, we watched a 45 second video. We extrapolate it to a minute because that's what the, the worksheet asks for. There was 45 seconds. There were 36 reps in that 45 seconds. So we're gonna say a total of 48 reps for that minute. We go to that conversion table in step two. We look for the orange conversion table. We look for 40 because we always err towards conservative and we find the corresponding conversion factor. We take that conversion factor, drop it into the left orange box, then drag it into the left hand orange box in step three in the lower left corner. Now we loop back around and do the same thing for the right hand. Remember, we're looking at frequency here, efforts per minute. The right hand is somewhat different. He's stabilizing with his right hand. If you'll notice, it's one sustained contraction. So over the 45 second video we watched, it was one contraction. We're gonna represent that in that conversion table in step two. We're gonna find the zero to 10. We're gonna find the appropriate conversion factor. We're gonna drop that into the right orange box and we're going to drag that into step three, the orange box for the right hand. Moving along, we're doing great here. Now we look at the duration per exertion. If you look at the way the left hand is moving, it's high rep, it's about one rep a second. So we're gonna represent that. We're gonna to go to that conversion table. We're gonna look for that corresponding number in the conversion table, look for the conversion factor. We're gonna drag that conversion factor into the yellow box on the left there. Then we're taking that and dropping it into the yellow box on the left hand and calculation in the lower left hand corner. You're getting the rhythm here. Now we go to the right hand, the duration per exertion, same process. The right hand, remember, was a sustained contraction, just stabilizing. So it's a one minute contraction. We're gonna extrapolate the 45 seconds to one minute. That's 60 seconds. We look for 60 seconds on the conversion table. We find its conversion factor. We put that in the yellow box on the right drag it down to the yellow box in step three. Now the wrist and hand posture, left hand first. As we can see, there's a lot of torquing of that left wrist using the screwdriver. So he's obviously covering at least 50 degrees between flexion and extension. We're gonna find that on the blue conversion table. Find that number, it's always air towards the lower. And so we're going to find the conversion factor put it in that left blue box, carry that down into step three for the corresponding left blue box, keep moving. Now we're in the posture and for the wrist and hand for the right hand. And again, this is a stabilizing task for the right hand. All he's doing is holding almost neutral. We'll give him a little bit of extension. So we find the corresponding number on that same conversion table. We drag it down into the right blue box. We drag that into step three and we're almost done. We're almost home. The last thing we have is the duration of tasks per work day. Now this number of tasks is really, it's a duration for how much he's doing. And we talked to his immediate supervisor, we talked to the employee, we talked to HR, and they all agreed it was about two hours in the morning just assembling these drawers before they're all put together into the cabinet. So we take that two hours. We take that to the last conversion table, the gray one. We find the two, we find the conversion factor, and we drag that into both gray boxes because it's for both hands. We're done. All we've got to do now is calculate the RSI score for both hands. We did everything right. We got all of our inputs in step one. We went through our conversion factors in step two. We plugged those conversion factors into step three. We run the numbers and we find out that the left hand has a number over 30, while the right hand has a number under one. What does that all mean? That's where we go to the results key in the lower right hand corner. And you'll see that anything over 10 is a hazard, anything under 10 is not which basically means the left hand has a hazardous task if it's being done a lot for two hours while the right hand isn't. So what do we do? We've got a ranking now. We have to prioritize. We have to respond to that. So we might come up with an intervention and then finally we have to review our intervention. 
what might our intervention look like? We might look at things like, oh, maybe using that drill there. <laughs> the reason he's not using it, it was because it wasn't charged. So we might make an administrative control to make sure that there's more than one battery and there's always a hot one available that we can always run that drill. Second thing is we might build up the grips on those hand tools and power tools. So, you know, the right grip circumference means less force per grip. So we could do that as well. Or gloves that do the very same thing, or both. And then finally, we might reposition the work so that he's working more inline rather than torquing to one side as in the video. These are all interventions then we could run another RSI and check our work and see if our intervention has improved. If we have a lower number at the second measurement as than we did at the first, we can claim that as a reduction in relative risk. That's how assessment tools work. Now that's how the RSI works. If you find that kind of cumbersome, we understand. That's why at Tamiki we offer computer vision ergonomic risk assessments. Now it used to take 15, 20 minutes or longer. We can now do in 15 or 20 seconds with our phone. Plus there's a recommendation engine, which actually gives you recommendations for intervention. And then you can run that assessment again afterwards and claim the relative risk reduction in your exposure. So I hope you found that interesting. And if you wanna learn more, by all means, stay in touch with us. So until next time, this is your global ergonomist, Matt Jeff, saying work smarter, not harder. And we'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.